Well, a question about mistakes. Yeah. After mistakes, I'm an expert. Board, and uh, in your <laughs> experience, did you find any big mistake? In my life? Yeah, yeah no, uh, I mean, um, in the using the social media by a company. Oh, oh, oh. That can be a... Um, you know, <clears throat> I, I think that the press loves to find examples where somebody did something stupid or somebody did something silly and it blows up into this huge problem, right? So I learned about a great example today. So uh, in this room before this conference started, we had the person who runs social media for the president of the Philippines. And he told a story about how one of the women who worked for the president of the Philippines was on their visit to Vietnam. And, and at a state dinner in Vietnam, she tweeted out that the wine was lousy. And this became this whole controversy because, you know, the president of the Philippines staff was insulting their host country, Vietnam, about the quality of their wine. It became a whole thing. She was in deep trouble, all this kind of stuff, right? So that's one example. Uh, another example is the, when United Airlines broke the guy's guitar and he made that great video about United breaks guitars and millions of people saw that, right? And, and then there's the case of Dell Computer where the guy, they, he got really lousy tech support so he started tweeting out about how lousy Dell tech support was. So yes, there are definitely examples like this. Uh, but having said that, United is still doing okay, Dell is still doing okay, the President of the Philippines is still doing okay. So I think that there's a tendency to, to make one silly tweet or one silly, you know, stupid resolution of losing a guitar. That can be, seem, it can seem like a very, very painful, stupid, big mistake that could crush your brand. But the truth is, fundamentally, if you provide a good product or service, you know, generally speaking, your brand will survive that. So I, and that's kind of me saying that, you know, people need to chill out. I mean, it ain't the end of the world. I've, I've uh, actually, I find it very enchanting when people tell the truth. Um, <clears throat> like, if you follow my Twitter stream, when people attack me, I, I, I just let them have it back. I mean, we were, we were discussing that in this room today. Somebody was telling me that, you know, I tweet too much. And, and I never followed him back. So this guy's you know, feelings were hurt that I didn't follow him back, and he says I tweet too much. So I sent him a tweet that said, just be a man. <laughs> and uh, to put it mildly, no, not many people will tell somebody, just be a man, man up, you know, be a man. Don't be such a chicken shit and be worried about whether I follow you back and that's going to make your day or not. I mean, geez, give me a break. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we are done. Uh, any other questions? No? The question from Rome. Yeah, Rome, how are you, Rome? Well, pretty good. Weather is fine. <laughs> uh, my question is, you mentioned many different social networks, there are different media, but I mean, after a while, it gets like a noise when you have too many information, you have too many devices, and too many website or portal. So how would you see like a, t a trend to unify those uh, networks or people to use them? Um, so what, you would suggest that, that there are too many social networks and there should be fewer? I see that, for example, Facebook does basically took over the space of other networks and try to bring people in his page. For example, with Branch Out, they are trying to kind of compete with LinkedIn. Yeah. So when I use computer, I have a very limited amount of time. I don't have the time to check every single page and yeah. I can't be overwhelmed by information. So what I see is that all these tweets from the bakery, yeah. <laughs> it is difficult to follow them. So if everybody is shouting in the word, then it, it all becomes like, background noise and yeah. I cannot follow everyone, so... Um, you know, actually, I, I think it's a matter of perspective that you are viewing the world as half empty, whereas I view the world as half full. And so, you know, what, what you view as too much noise, I view as democracy. And so I would hate for there to be limited choices 
And, you know, at an extreme, if a government says, you know, you have to be on Twitter, you cannot be on Facebook. Um, or, you know, if you were in China and they said, we're going to shut down this and you, can, you cannot use Google, you have to use Baidu or something like that. So I understand the problem you're talking about, that there may be too many choices and too much noise. But I think that too many choices and too much noise is a much better, is a much better situation than too few. And so it's kind of up to you to decide. Um, you know, you you don't have to be on every service, right? You can choose to um, play less. I mean, listen, some people in America, I don't know how it works in Italy, but for Comcast TV, you know, you can get package A with 50 channels, package B with 100 channels, package C with 200 channels. It's up to you. And so... If 200 channels overwhelms you, just take the 50 channel thing. Uh, I think it's a matter of personal choice, and I, I really strongly believe that the more choice, the better. Uh, guy, uh, hi. I have a question, if I may. Uh, what, uh, uh, on a point of view of a VC, if you are uh, one, or let me say, judges of a VC, as you are sometimes, uh, what, how, uh, how much does it matter for uh, a guy that comes to you to present uh, his idea or a team comes to you? Uh, the number of uh, fans they have in their page and the number of Twitter followers, do they have a value and how they can demonstrate to you uh, the money they are getting from, from that? Yeah. Um, I, I think for most VCs, well, first, first of all, most VCs are so clueless about social media, they wouldn't even know what it really meant, number one. But let's say you had one that did understand. Um, I think that it would be, you know, if you went through the list of factors about what would make you interested in a company, the number of fans or followers would be, you know, the second or third level down. Um, now this is now this is this is different than me saying you know okay what I care most about is that there are tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of people using your service. They've registered. They're active. That's what I care about. That is clearly indicated by the number of fans and you know followers you all have. But if in the situation where two guys come to you to pitch a company or two gals or a gal and a guy and they say well we want to create a new social media network and uh, one of the reasons why you should believe that we're capable of doing this is I have I don't know 25,000 Twitter followers I would laugh at that person I would say you know, well what does having 20, 25,000 Twitter followers prove that you can create the next Facebook I mean it's fantastic you got 25,000 now if that person came to me and said my name is Lady Gaga, and I'm going to create the Lady Gaga social network, and I have 10 million followers. Okay, 10 million makes me stand up and you know pay attention. Of course, the reason why she has 10 million followers is because she already is Lady Gaga. So if you had someone who isn't Lady Gaga but has 10 million followers, of course, I don't know how that would be possible. That would be interesting. But 25,000, 50,000, 100,000, I don't, I don't think it means that much. How many okay. followers do you have? Um, I have, uh, at Guy Kawasaki, I have about 340,000. I also have, at all top, um, the reason I have two different accounts is Guy Kawasaki repeats his tweets four times, and all top doesn't repeat. So all top is Guy Kawasaki light. If you have <laughs> so, if you add the two, it's about 400,000.